Hi everyone, it's Lynn. Um, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of products and hopefully help you save some money. Uh, the other day, Lee, who's Crafty Loops on YouTube, YouTube um, posted a video review about a similar product. Um, it was being sold on Amazon for £17.95, um, £17.95 that is, for a 500 gram pot. Um, when you click on the link and look at the product on Amazon, you'll see that it says the full product title dash polymorph moldable plastic pellets. This made me realise that the product title was just a brand name and was probably much more expensive um, than buying the product just in its unbranded form. I managed to find a supplier who sells this product um, and ships worldwide um, and he's got 100% feedback um, on eBay and also um, has his own website that he sells it through that I'll give you the link below. Um, if you didn't, oh yeah, I must tell you before I go on, um, yeah, his price for this 500 grams is only £7.90, so that's £10 cheaper than buying the branded, um, the branded product. Um, the company, who are called BLR Tronics, um, also sell in various different sizes, so you don't have to buy 500 grams um, if you wanted to try a smaller size to begin with. Um, he ships in 100 grams, 250 grams, 500 grams, 750 grams and 1 kilo. Um, he also does a powder paint, um, which is one pound per colour, and he has eight colours, which you um, can add to it once it's melted and uh, just keep mixing it in. Um, for those of you who maybe didn't see Lee's um, video the other day, and you're not sure what polymorph is, um, you put it into um, just boiled water from the kettle. Um, need, uh, the water needs to be above 62 degrees C. And, um, and then the granules melt in the hot water and turn into a transparent, flexible material. Um, and then you can sort of mold it together and put it inside any any moulds that you have um, and then it hardens pretty quickly and once it goes opaque um, you know then you can take it out and use it you can either use it for making moulds although um, I found that uh, here's one that I made yesterday which is from um, an earring which I pushed into the soft material and then I used it and I made a clay clay button afterwards um, but they are quite hard to get out because um, the material isn't flexible the polymorph isn't isn't flexible so you know you have to sort of dig it to come out um, I made another one here which is um, a mold from this bracelet and I made one yesterday as well and I had to physically dig it out with my um, pokey tool and then of course it, it caused some damage um, the end result was okay once I managed to poke it out but I still had to sort of repair the edges see here where it was damaged by the pokey tool so I think it's more suitable really for putting into silicone moulds 
um, that you can get out of earlier. Um, so here's my pokey tool now, and this is one that I put in there this morning. And it, see, it just it breaks it. It's nigh on impossible to get it out. So I wouldn't really recommend it for any complicated moulds like that one. The button one wasn't too bad. That one popped out fairly easily um, because it's practically a flat surface. But um, yeah, I think. In, as far as crafting is concerned, it's more suitable for using inside silicone moulds. Um, I will show you how this one works as well in case you want to compare it against the other product if you think that there may be a difference, but from what I can see there isn't any difference in this at all. Um, the company, and let me say as well, I'm not being paid to do this review or anything, it's just, you know, I liked this product when I saw Lee demonstrating it. I thought that it would be useful for us crafters who like to use moulds. Um, it does come out very light, it's lighter than, um, than clay. Um, here's a butterfly that I've done in clay and a butterfly that I've done in the polymorph. And the butterf this polymorph butterfly is much lighter, um, and it can be painted, as you see. And I've put rub and buff on here. Um, here's another frame oops, that I made. You can see the plastic on the back. Um, I've painted it with black gesso, and then went over it with rub and buff, and it's a really nice effect, as equally as good as. Um, Fimo or uh, using the air dried clay and very simple to use. Um, BLR Tronics also make another product which I got hold of which is called Cool Morph and um, this melts at a lower temperature than the polymorph and um, it's supposed to melt in water over 42 degrees C um, and it says water from a hot tap typically. Um, I did try it with tap water and also water that had cooled down in the kettle and I found that really it didn't get flexible enough so I then used it with boiling water from the kettle and in that instance it melted really well and I actually liked this product a bit more than the than the polymorph um, because it seems to get much more flexible and um, well as you see when I do the demo it ends up a bit like goo um, and it's very easy to press into the moulds um, and uh, afterwards it remains slightly more flexible. Um, I think I made this one from the core morph and you can see it still bends slightly whereas the polymorph is just totally rigid. Um, the polymorph as well I found that when you work with that you need to work with it really quickly because as soon as you've got it out of the hot water more or less it starts to harden um, so you need to get it you know, pressed into your moulds quickly. Um, it's not so bad if it's a sort of straightforward mould as, as this where you're just going to get a ball and then press it in and it's done. But if you're doing something a bit more intricate like this where you've got to press it and work it all around, um, I found that it was going hard too quickly and the finish um, wasn't as good because you couldn't get, didn't have time to get it in and get the back flat. Um, but the cool morph um, gave you much more working time and it took longer to harden overall, whereas the polymorph hardened almost instantly. Um, I did mess about with it a bit yesterday as well, and here I mixed in some um, alcohol ink 
and I just sort of put a couple of drops into the plastic and then kept turning it over and squashing it and put, turning it over and squashing it, adding a bit more ink, turning it over and squashing it. Um, so it has coloured it up, it's sort of like a marbled effect, but I'm not sure if I would want to do that again in the future. The retail price of the Cool Morph is also slightly more expensive than the Polymorph. Um, at today's price, um, it's a 500 gram um, bag would be £12.95. So it's a few more pounds than the Polymorph, um, but it's still less uh, than the other product. And they, I mean, they both have their merits. I would still like to have the cheaper version um, for doing quick little things. Um, I mean, for instance, these leaves. Here, I made those, and I put some glitter in, in that one. I just shook some in and squeezed it in, the same as I did with the, um, the alcohol ink. And it's taken on a slightly green tinge, anyway, from the glitter, but you can see the glitter sparkling inside. So oh, I was just sort of trying out some things. But like I said before, you know, if it's um, an easy to get into mould, not too intricate, then the polymorph would be fine. And um, today actually I'm going to try it um, with almost instantly boiled water and, um, and leave it in for a bit longer to see if it does get more flexible. So we'll see that when I do the demonstration afterwards. Um, the company as well that sells it, BLR Tronics, they also have the trademark for this cool morph. Um, yeah, so he sells both. Okay, let's do a demo. Um, I've got my glass jar here, a spoon, the polymorph. My kettle's just about to boil in the background. Um, I'm going to put. spoon and a half. Um, it goes an awful long way and also any excess that you've got, bits that you might cut off at the end, um, like these pieces, you can just throw it back into the mix and they'll remelt and you can reuse them again. Okay, the kettle's boiled. water. Okay, I'm just going to pour the boiled water on the top. Almost instantly the granules start turning transparent. My instructions don't say how long you need to leave them. Um, it just says simply heat the pellets in water to over 62 degrees. Leave the pellets to melt in the water until they turn transparent. If you can see them in there, they look a bit like frog spawn. Um, carefully remove the pellets from the water and mould by hand. Add colour at this stage if required. Okay, well. They sort of feel a bit spongy at the moment. I'll leave them a little bit longer just to give them um, a fairer go. I've been there about a minute. I think in the other demo Lee left it for two minutes so I'll leave it for another minute. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Obviously it's going to be hot, so I'm just going to drop it. Um, and then you have to start moulding it into a clear gel. You can see 
almost immediately it's it's sort of pliable but it's still fairly stiff um, the polymorph is a bit more runnier okay I've got this mold now so I'll let it harden a bit I'll put it back in the water just for a little bit longer let's get some paper towels I'm making a mess here to push it right down into the mould but at the same time you don't really want to use too much make sure you haven't got any air bubbles underneath you see now that one's starting to go opaque already but it comes out almost straight away and you can see that it's really got a lot of good detail on there um, Some sturdy scissors here with my Tim Holtz scissors, um, and then you can just fairly easily cut around the edge of the design. Um, the longer you leave this polymorph, um, the harder it gets, and once it's in its solid state um, it's hard to cut so you need to do it while it's still flexible um, yeah, a bit here there we are so we've got a nice Cameo with a lovely rose. Um, and now these pieces I can just pop back into the pot and now remount. Oh, I should have put that fat bit in there as well, didn't I, when I took it off. Okay. Let's let it soften up a bit more. See this one that's gone perfectly hard, there's no way you could cut that at all, it's solid. See, with, um, when I've been used to using polymer clay, when you've got excess over the top like that, you can just sort of wipe it off immediately, but this has already gone sort of like a rubber band. Um, the only good thing is that it pops out quickly and we've got that lovely leaf. So you're not actually wasting anything because of the fact that you can just put it straight back into the water. Just cut around there, put that back into the water. Um, and then you've got your shape, you can just leave that to harden. Uh, in the interest of fairness as well, let's try and use the polymorph to make a frame. Um, I didn't say it was impossible, I just said it was harder. So I'm just going to make my piece of polymorph into a sausage shape um, I think you're gonna 
you can do this if you do it in two stages. So sort of more or less try and work it into the length that you're going to need, then re-soften it again. This is still the same water that I had from just before. I haven't really boiled it or anything. leave it in there until it starts to go a bit more transparent. Yep, get in there. Come on, come on, come out. Stop. And then just quickly get it and then work it into your mould as quick as you possibly can. let that hang over. We can cut it off. Yeah, so press it in and press it down as fast as you can. It's already going opaque. Okay, let's take it out. Um, yeah, well you've got the nice you've got a nice frame design in there. So that is an option if you want to buy the cheaper product of the two and then you can just quickly go around the edges again with your scissors and trim off that excess I mean I'm personally all about a bargain and if I can find something that works equally as well for a fraction of the price. I don't believe in paying any more than I have to. This product was originally developed actually for household um, use. The company who makes it has their own video up um, and they've used it, they've moulded it round a knife and made their own personal moulded knife handle and they've also um, you know the screw t-shaped things that you use for bleeding radiators they've moulded extra onto each side of the handle so that it's easier to turn um, there's also stories of people who've mended um, wonky tables and chair legs um, so really, it's got all sorts of um, properties. Now, it's made into a nice frame, but it hasn't actually, where it was the two ends joined, it hasn't really joined very well. But I think I could probably get round that, perhaps, maybe even. my heat gun on it a bit and see what happens. Well, I think I should get something silicone. Yeah, it is joining it up again. But, uh, possibilities to using the cheaper polymorph. Yep, let's stack that back together and I've um, lost a little bit of the design there but I think if I melt it again slightly and then push that back into the mould should be able to get it to pick up the pattern again. Yeah. So excellent. So 
But I think it's just a case of um, playing with it a lot, really, and uh, finding out what you can and can't do. Okay, now we'll do the same with the cool moth. Kettle's boiling. We'll put in a spoon and a half, as before. Again, it's gone clear quickly. Just give it a minute. And we'll do the same mould as we did before. We'll start with this one then. Okay, and fish it out. very hot but instantly I can feel that this one is much softer than the other one it's a lot easier to work with it's more like transparent plasticine um, you see you can see or like toffee now the other one would already be going hard and this one you see is still really quite flexible and it's easier to take off a piece and easier to work it into your mould. I've still got the other bit in my hand. And it gives me time too to be able to get the backs flat. Um, and this piece that I've got in my hand, now the other one would have been totally solid by now, and this is still like toffee. So I'm going to make it into my sausage shape, and even without having to reheat it or anything, I can start to squash it into the mould, and because as well um, that it's still more gooey, it's a lot easier to mould it into the shape that you want. And um and I you know I've still got excess here. Um and where the join is there we had the trouble with the uh, the other one. That has still gone into itself totally transparent <coughs> excuse me all oh, these allergies um, and I can still work it and push it away from the edges into the mould push it down to make it nice and flat um, and I've still got the piece in my hand which is still as soft and pliable as before um, so let's use that and I'll make a leaf And it's easier as well, even after all this time, you can still push it into all the little tiny pieces like the stalk on this leaf. So out of the two products really, I think as far as 
using it for crafting is concerned, I think I do prefer this cool morph. Um, it's much easier to work with and I think the end results are a lot better. I am still able to mould this. So now I've used that whole piece without having to reheat any of it at all. Um, the difference as well between the two is that this one now takes longer to actually cool down, um, whereas the other, the thermo, sorry, the polymorph went um, opaque and hard almost instantly. These can't be removed just yet. Um, we still need to leave them for a couple of minutes. I think when it starts to peel away from the side of the mould of its own accord, then, you're, then you know that it's ready. So yeah, I'm very pleased with that. Um, I would buy both of them again, but I think for doing this sort of um, moulding and using it in moulds, I would use the cool morph because I think it's more suitable to uh, the crafting community. Um, I've just popped another spoonful of the um, grains into the hot water. Um, it's the same hot water. I haven't reboiled it again, so it's been standing there for a while. It's not quite as hot as it was, but it's not boiling, but it's still hot. And yeah, it's still moulding well into the piece of toffee shape. Um, what I thought I'd do with this one, just to make it fair again, was to make another mould with this one, with the earring, the same as I'd done here. So, I'm just going to push it into the mould. Get it right around this ball in the center. Okay, I'll just leave that like that and uh, these are going more opaque now but we'll leave them a little bit longer and uh, we'll come back shortly and take them out. Okay, I've left it for about half an hour now and they have gone more opaque and yes, look, they come out easily and they are solid. The Cool Morph is much more transparent. If you compare it to the one that I made with the Polymorph, you can see that the Polymorph is much whiter uh, than the Cool Morph one. It's definitely more flexible. Um, the one that I made with the polymorph doesn't bend very much at all, whereas the cool morph is really flexible. Um, I can still trim this easily after it's um, solidified which I couldn't do with the polymorph because it's so much more solid. Finish that off after all these little bits can be used again. Um, right, let's pop out. Yeah, it's come out beautifully. Um, 
and it's picked up the detail better I think as well than the I keep going the wrong way than the polymorph um, and as well because it was flexible I was able to get a deeper Yeah, three more three D. The leaves just pop out there. Really cute. Yep, no problem with those. They don't even need cutting because I was able to use right up to the last tiny bits. Let's put those over there. Um, and let's see the mould of the earring. So easy to... The other one was hard to get out because when it's stuck to the earring but it's coming. go of that. Oh, so the pearls come right out of the earring. And it's stuck in the mould. It's coming. Let's try and use Timmy's scissors to lever it out. Okay, not ideal. I think it's because the plastic was so hot that it's actually melted a bit into the pearl, so... Oh, it's okay. Yeah. The other one as well took the... The one that I made with the polymorph took the actual silver piece of the, the pearl off silver coating so that's probably why that one came away easier and then this one just having the plastic part of the earring it has melted into the plastic so that wouldn't be a very good image anyway because it's all bumpy inside there now so ideally then neither of them would are suitable for making moulds I don't think um, this one is still more flexible, so perhaps if you made a mould of something that was all metal and wasn't going to melt like that, you might have some luck with it. But I think as far as I'm concerned um, with moulds, I'm going to stick to using silicone moulds or making my own silicone moulds. Um, but I do like the material... Um, as far as using it in the mould is concerned but my preference between the two the cool morph or the polymorph I would have to say I prefer the slightly more expensive cool morph for its flexibility um, and ease of manipulation so anyway that's my review of that if you want to buy some, I've put links to the company uh, in my um, blurb down the bottom underneath the video. So, I hope this has helped. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment. Bye now.